Welcome to this El Nino briefing created May 31st, 2015. My name is Mark O'Malley with the National Weather Service in Phoenix. El Nino is a seasonal and persistent abnormally pool of warm water across the equatorial Pacific Ocean that couples with the atmosphere to create changes in the overall atmospheric circulation pattern and in turn weather patterns. Specifically, we look at sea surface temperature anomalies near the equator in the east central Pacific. In this key Nino 3.4 region, we need warm water of at least a half a degree Celsius above normal to persist for several consecutive months in order to effectively change the weather patterns downstream and directed towards the United States. In these images and animations, warm water has been prevalent since last summer over much of the equatorial Pacific. However, only in the past several months has persistent very warm water uh, occurred across all Nino regions. When trying to forecast El Nino, much of what eventually is measured at the ocean surface can be traced to the evolution of warmer water several hundred meters below the surface. Organized deep ocean waves can move massive amounts of water west to east as well as from the ocean depths to the surface and vice versa. This phenomena, called an oceanic Kelvin wave, has occasionally helped steadily warm the equatorial Pacific since last year. Recently, a strong Kelvin wave has unlocked a very large reservoir of unusually warm water to the ocean surface. As a result, this, the measure of El Nino has been growing for the past couple months, and as will be shown later in this presentation, has finally allowed the linkage between the ocean and the atmosphere to materialize. We can look at sea surface temperature anomalies across the entire Pacific Basin for hints in what could have happened in the atmosphere. In the past month, a plume of very warm water has spread across the east tropical Pacific, extending from the South American coast through the dateline. This is more in line of a classic El Nino signature. In addition, a large mass of warmer than normal water has been sitting along the west coast of North America. Along with the warmer than normal water along parts of the South American coast as well, this may help support the maintenance of this tropical El Nino plume. And lastly, waters have cooled somewhat over the West Pacific, working in concert with everything else that's going on in the Pacific Basin, could set up an atmospheric response that resembles a maturing El Nino phase. The atmospheric response to this El Nino has been rather pronounced in the past couple months. Concentrated thunderstorm clusters have been far more persistent over the east central tropical Pacific. This is one definitive sign of a more robust El Nino. Also, the typical low-level easterly trade winds along the equator have been absent for the past month or so. Instead, bursts of westerly winds have replaced these trade winds, allowing warmer waters to be maintained over the eastern Pacific and inhibiting the upwelling of colder water along the west coast of the Americas. This is also a classic sign of El Nino, though it's really typically more seen in the northern hemisphere in the winter versus the summer. When forecasting El Nino, we look at several different dynamical and statistical models focused on the critical Nino 3.4 region. By utilizing varying model solutions from different countries, we can visualize both the spread and average of all the models to get a sense of forecast confidence, and the most likely outcome for that matter. From all these models, there's a tremendous spread in possible outcomes heading through the summer and into the upcoming winter season. The vast majority of models do indicate a continuation of El Nino through the 2015 year. However, the eventual strength of this El Nino phase is very uncertain. This is, uncertainty is not unusual in forecasts made during the spring season, and models have heightened difficulty making ENSO forecasts during this time of year. Unfortunately for us, the El Nino strength aspect is very important for Southeast California and Arizona, with weak events having little to no predictable influence on us, but the strong events historically leading to significant impacts during the fall and winter season. Another way to quantify the spread and uncertainty in forecasting El Nino is using probability of occurrence. In this graph, a 90% chance of El Nino prevailing through the summer is depicted, with probabilities being maintained around 80% thereafter. Thus, the official forecast calls for a very good chance of El Nino continuing for the remainder of the year. However, no information regarding the eventual strength of this El Nino is presented on this image. 
If you want to keep up to date with the progression of El Nino and are interested in the process and details of forecasting El Nino, we suggest you check out the blog kept by our friends at the Climate Prediction Center. Their blog is updated every one to two weeks with unique and entertaining information on ENSO and the challenges of forecasting ENSO. So in summary, there's a 90% chance of El Nino prevailing through the summer and most likely continuing into the winter season. However, the eventual strength of this El Nino is very uncertain and El Nino strength is vital for making better advanced seasonal forecasts. There is some hope that a more significant El Nino will materialize, though we will know more by the middle and end of the summer. So what does this current El Nino phase mean for our upcoming monsoon season? Well, you're going to have to check back as we'll be up having a monsoon outlook video ready before monsoon awareness week this June. Thank you for viewing this multimedia briefing. You can also find us on the web, Facebook, and Twitter at the addresses listed here.